Do people who suffer with multiple sclerosis have a parasitic infestation? Oh yes, they do. And in this video, I'm going to share pictures, images of some of the parasites that our students are passing as they are recovering from multiple sclerosis. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pam Bartha and I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. I'm going to share pictures with you of worms. And if you don't like to look at pictures of worms, then this is not the video for you. But if you're dealing with chronic disease and you're wondering why you feel so lousy, could it be that you also have parasites that you need to treat? Would it be nice to know what you're dealing with? And these pictures will really help you to understand the level of parasitic infestation that we're dealing with. Please bear in mind that the images you're going to see are larger worms, but when we're sick with chronic disease, we have large and small worms. And if you didn't get a chance to watch part one of my series, The Cause of Multiple Sclerosis, where I talked about MS and filarial worms, in particular, I talked about the research from Dr. Alan McDonald. He should win an award for that because this is so profound. In every single case that he tested of people that died of MS, they were all infested with small worms, small filarial worms in their spinal fluid. And I'm not going to explain all the implications of what that means for MS, but go and watch that video when you're done with this one. And that is MS and filarial worms. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing pictures of the larger worms. I share all the time in my videos that when we're dealing with chronic disease and we want to recover from chronic disease, we have to understand that we're dealing with multiple infections. We're in a state of severe dysbiosis, meaning we're really out of balance. So we may have small single cell parasites, which we can't see. And we have these filarial worms, which have made their way into our central nervous system. But our students are also passing a lot of different, very large worms. And although the larger worms may not be causing their MS symptoms, like the spasticity and the paralysis and the numbness, those large worms are number one, infecting us with other infections, the smaller parasites and also fungus, but they're also making us deficient in nutrients and they produce chemicals that affect our cognitive function and affect our mood and our ability to focus and concentrate and can cause anxiety and depression and make us feel sick and weak and suppress our immune system. So they have to go. If we have one or two worms, our immune system can deal with it. But by the time we have chronic disease, what I'm seeing in my students is that we're infested. And these pictures today are going to help you to appreciate what you're dealing with. Why is this topic so important? Why do we want to be, you know, looking at this? Well, number one, what I'm going to share with you is visual proof that when you're dealing with chronic disease, because it's not just MS, I'll share a few different conditions that we are infested with parasites and parasites are a really, really big problem. So this is all supporting the fact that multiple sclerosis is caused by infections. And if you want to look at some studies, please visit my website, livediseasefree.com, livediseasefree.com. I have a ton of research there for multiple sclerosis. If you have a different disease, just go on Google, look for PubMed, which is a medical database. It has lots of studies and type in your disease and infection, your disease and candida, fungus, parasites, the topics that I talk about. And I'm sure you're going to find that there will be some studies for your condition also. This is a huge growing field. So I just wanted to share these pictures with you because it adds more evidence that multiple sclerosis is an infectious disease. The second part is that there is research coming out where some researchers are saying, if we give people that suffer with MS parasites, like a big worm, a whipworm, for example, a pig whipworm, that might help modulate the immune system. Their theory is that people that are living in countries where they have more worms, they're finding a lower incidence of multiple sclerosis. And in countries where worms should not be an issue, they're finding higher incidence of multiple sclerosis. This is really based on the theory that in developed countries, we don't have parasites. And honestly, nothing could be further from the truth. And what they're hoping to do is they're hoping to find like, you know, if we infect people with MS and chronic disease with these worms, and if they produce this 
chemical that we could patent, we could have a new drug that could modulate the immune system when in fact they want to suppress the immune system. We don't need to suppress our immune system. We need to treat the parasites. We need to treat the variety of infections we're dealing with. We need to bring back balance. And when we do that, then we have amazing health. And I should mention, if you haven't met me before, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 30 years ago. So this topic is very near and dear to my heart because I learned early on that MS is caused by infection by some amazing hero doctors 30 years ago. I read their books. And so I took a different approach. I took, I didn't go down the standard of care approach. And I, the more I focused on treating infections, the more success I had. So I've been 30 years free of MS and my heart and my deepest desire is to help others recover because once you get your life back, it's just amazing and you want everyone to have that joy. So that's why I teach what I do is, and we're coaching large numbers of students in the Live Disease Free Academy. They're called wellness champions and they're recovering from all kinds of chronic diseases by using a holistic approach and treating the inf chronic silent infections that they're dealing with. So that's the pictures that I'll be sharing with you today. I created these slides so that you can take a look at these worms. Again, viewer discretion, I'm going to be showing you some pretty disgusting pictures of worms, but I get excited when I see them because as my students are passing these worms, I know that they're feeling better and better and they're getting closer and closer to recovery. So let's go to the slides. The cause of multiple sclerosis part two, MS and parasitic worms. I am going to be sharing some slides with you, some images, pictures of parasites that our students have sent in to me as they are recovering from various diseases, not just multiple sclerosis. We're going to look at pictures of different types of roundworms and flukes. One of my students recovering from multiple sclerosis did a stool test and she sent it off to a really good lab. They analyzed her stool and said she's fine. No parasites were picked up at all. One day after she received her results back, she did an oxygen treatment and she passed this worm. She sent it back into the lab and they analyzed it and confirmed that it is a whipworm. This is the problem. Our stool tests are not accurate. And so most of us will have stool tests done spend up to $500 for maybe a comprehensive stool analysis and we get a false negative. They are not picking up the parasites that we're suffering with. This is another image of a roundworm from another student. It's very, very common that our students are passing these. As our students are recovering from these parasitic infestations, they find that they must use a strategic approach. I'll talk about all the steps that we do in recovery, but as they re are recovering, using antiparasitic drugs and oxidizing agents, doing enemas and using herbs, very often they will pass multiple worms or segments of worms at one time. This is an image of a roundworm that one of our students passed, the very first one that she saw. She was using the antiparasitic drugs, she was using oxidizing agents, doing an enema with it, and after the enema she felt wonderful. And then about an hour later, she started to feel like a little bit of stomach discomfort, maybe a little bit of a headache and just kind of feeling agitated. And she remembered me saying that that's usually a sign that a worm has died. She did a follow-up enema and this came out. This is a picture of a ropeworm that our student has passed and she also was recovering from multiple sclerosis. Some of these ropeworms can be very, very large. They can be two feet long or even longer. And again, as they're passing, as the students are passing them, they're feeling so much better immediately as they're passed. This is yet another student that recovered from multiple sclerosis. She passed multiple worms that were this big. This worm, I'm sure, is at least over two feet long. And actually, here's another image of another one that she passed. This picture is from one of our students recovering from PLS. In one email, she sent me 20 pictures similar to this. This looks possibly like a rope worm or a large round worm. And as she is passing these worms, she's noticing huge life-changing improvements in her health where her walking has improved. She's able to jump up off the ground. This is PLS, an incurable disease. And yet here's another picture that she sent in, and this would look more like round worm to me. When attending Dr. Klinghart's workshops, I always remember what he said. 
His Lyme patients are usually infested with parasites. And as he helps them to treat the parasites, very often he doesn't even have to treat the Lyme disease. But if he does, it's so much easier to treat. This is a student that came to me and joined the academy. She did not have multiple sclerosis. She was dealing with Lyme disease, working with Lyme litter doctors and not getting better. She didn't want to use antibiotics, so she decided to do a different approach. So instead of targeting Lyme first, she started to treat parasites first. She's done multiple treatment cycles of parasites and fungus. She's feeling better than she's felt in years, and she hasn't even started to treat the Lyme yet. And she has passed so many worms this size and bigger. Here's another one also that she passed. Last picture I wanted to share with you is what I believe is an intestinal fluke. I see these quite often also in our students. And I didn't know much about flukes until like in university, we studied them a little bit in, during the biology degree. But to see them in real life is quite shocking. They're flat worms. They cause stomach discomfort. They are really often linked in with chronic disease. They can be two to three inches long in the intestines. So this would be an intestinal fluke, but we can also have them in our liver, the liver flukes. So our students, when they're doing the liver gallbladder flush later, when they're feeling better, they're also often releasing these liver flukes, which are, would be smaller than this one. I hope that those images have really helped you to understand what you're dealing with, what you need to treat. Until we see these images, we have no idea how infested we are with these parasites. And they can impact us in so many ways. Number one, they're making us deficient in nutrients. Number two, they're producing so many different chemicals that affect our cognitive function, our mood, and also our energy levels. They suppress our immune system and they are infecting us with other microbes. As I shared with the other video, the part one, the flareal worms and multiple sclerosis, how those little worms, those little nematodes are infecting us with Lyme disease. Well, these larger worms, they carry their own microbes also. So they're infecting us with all kinds of other microbes. They need to come out, we need to treat them. And all I can share with you is that the more we treat ourselves, the more we deworm, the younger we feel. And it is like an anti-aging. And it's something that I really believe that we should be doing in the developed countries at least once a year, maybe sometimes twice a year. It is really part of disease prevention. I'd like to share a few successes with you right now because this is the proof. This is what we do in the academy. So we just had our Q&A call. It's once a week and the students share their successes. Before I share these successes with you, I should just kind of give you an overview of what the students are doing to recover. Number one, they're following a low carb eating plan. And the purpose of this is number one, to greatly reduce the food to the infections that are making us sick and to give our body a lot of nutrition. So these parasites, the worms, the fungus, the lime, all the ones I'm talking about, they thrive on carbohydrates. And so as we decrease the carbohydrates, it makes them less active, the inflammation starts to go down and we start to have symptom improvements. We can't starve them to death, we can't kill them with any diet, but we are making it so that they are less active so we still feel better and it makes it easier to treat. And because we're dealing with such an infestation, we tend to be deficient in nutrients. So this eating plan, it's many, many vegetables. And if you don't know much about the Live Disease Free Eating Plan yet, make sure to go to our YouTube channel and watch it there. I've got a playlist on what I eat for breakfast, dinner, and supper, and the eating plan, what we avoid, what we eat, so you can get some details there. So make sure to watch those videos when you're done. So number one is the eating plan. Number two is to support the body. We have to make sure that students are sleeping well, they're having daily bowel movements, they're opening up their detox pathways, they're reducing certain environmental toxins. We're building the body up before we start to treat. Then we look at symptoms and there are very specific symptoms for parasites, very specific symptoms for fungus, and very specific symptoms for the infections associated with Lyme disease. That really helps the students to understand what they're dealing with. So it's not something that Pam told them, but they see that they have all these symptoms. Then we build a game plan to treat. 
And normally we will knock back parasites for at least 14 days and then fungus for at least 10 days and then take a break and do multiple cycles. And as the students are going through those cycles, they're getting, they're feeling better and better and better. So some of these students that I'm going to share their successes, they're in the prep phase. They're just getting ready to treat and others are in the treatment. And I'll, I'll let you know which ones are which. This first student has shared, I've just been following the eating plan and I've already noticed that a couple of spots of psoriasis on my arms have disappeared. The second student, she's also just in the prep phase, just starting the eating plan. She's noticed that, she said, I've noticed that since I've changed my food choices, my balance has improved. The sensation in my right leg and body have vanished. I feel more normal when I walk. My leg is functioning like it should. I can lift my right leg higher than before. More, I have more energy. I sleep better. My recall is faster. I can walk faster. I can get up easier off the ground. This is all with just following a low carb eating plan, the live disease free eating plan. This next student shared, when I used to go shopping, I would get a buzzing sensation throughout my body. The buzzing got so bad that it would last for two to three hours at night all over my body. Now it happens very seldom and it didn't happen after my long shopping trip. Also, I'm so much more active and able to do my household chores each week and I'm sleeping better through the night and I didn't get up to go to the bathroom once. This is a huge for a lot of people with chronic disease. They get up many times throughout the night and she didn't. Yay. My assistant at work has noticed a big difference in my ability to focus. I am much, much better now than I have been in the past year. This next student is just starting to treat and she shared, when I put my socks on this morning, I was able to lift up my leg and put it over my other leg by itself. I was so happy. This one I wanted to share with you because this is really interesting. So we have wonderful integrative practitioners that can do energy testing. So this one student went to two very well-respected practitioners and did en they did energy testing on them. And they said, both of them said, you do not have any parasites. And I said to him, I said, there's no way you can be suffering with all of these neurological symptoms associated and he has MS and not have parasites. So he decided to treat and he's starting to pass parasites and he's starting to feel better. He's noticing improvements in his vision already just in the first cycle. This next student has had multiple sclerosis for 30 years and has not been able to walk for 15 years. She has completed at least four treatment cycles and she is able to stand up. I can never promise students that they can walk again, especially when they're that advanced, but she is starting to stand for a few seconds at a time. And she, her hand, she couldn't use it for many years and now she can open and close her hand. I am happier than I've ever been and I'm having so many tears of joy. Last night was the first time in 30 years that I had no pain in my shoulder blade, spine and neck. I slept nine and a half hours straight. I thought something had changed when I went to bed last night and I could lay flat on my back with my legs straight. I can't remember when that was possible. I am so excited for today to see what happens next. This last student that I want to share with you has just finished the academy and she's symptom free. She's still treating, but she's symptom free. And she shared, this week has been so great for me. I'm still treating and I feel so great. Even though I didn't have any symptoms going into this treatment cycle, I feel even better than before. I don't know how to quantifiably measure it, but I just feel better. Also this week, it's been so exciting for me because I received acceptance into school to go back to school this fall again. Here I go off to continue pursuing my dream. It has been such an emotional week for me because after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, I didn't know if I would ever get to this point again. I didn't know if I'd ever be able to go back to school. Thank you for being part of this progress and sacrificing so people like me can heal and get our life back. I was so extremely happy when I saw that acceptance letter. I couldn't stop crying. I was so happy. These are real successes of wellness champions that are recovering from chronic disease. Wellness champions, I call them the leaders, the forward thinkers, and the trailblazers. 
because of their diligence and their hard work and all the pictures they're sending me, we are having a much greater understanding of what we're dealing with, the parasitic infestation that we're dealing with, what types of parasites need to be treated. If this video excites you, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our Live Disease Free YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell so that you will know when I'll be releasing my next video, which will be part three, multiple sclerosis and fungus. And you can already be a wellness champion by helping us to get the word out. Please share this video with anyone you know that is searching for answers. They're trying to figure out how they can recover, why they're sick. This is a very big piece of the puzzle of why they're sick. Next week, I'll be sharing part three of the cause of multiple sclerosis, MS and fungal overgrowth. This is again, a really important topic. This is what I learned 30 years ago that from the hero doctors, they really understood the big role that fungus plays in all chronic disease. So we'll see you then.